the ability to sequence the commands or the operations that you have within a program is critical if you're going to have a program that works smoothly. And that is what we're going to be discussing in this session and the other session. The terminology that is used to refer to this is known as control structures. So you will find that as you go through different material, different books, etc., the concept of a control structure is going to be brought up. And whenever you see that term, I want you to think about sequencing. How do we put the, the operations, the commands, in a prescribed order? so that we can carry out the task that needs to be taken. There are three options when it comes to control structures or sequencing. We have sequential, we have selection, and we also have repetition. And I want you to think about the sequencing as being the glue that brings everything together. So you would have already looked at things like functions, creating variables, I.O. operations. And it's now the sequencing that brings all of this together so that we can truly have systems that work properly. At the heart of understanding what sequencing is, we want to look at a term known as a condition. And a condition is some statement that is tested and then we determine whether or not that statement is true or whether or not it is false. And there are some operators that we have at our disposal as shown in the listing right here. So we have the equal to, which is two equal sign. We have the not equal to, which is an, an exclamation followed by an equal sign. We have the greater than, we have the less than, we have the greater than or equal to, and we also have the less than or equal to. And these are the basic operators or operations that we have in terms of comparisons. Now, whenever we compare stuff, we might want to do statements if a thing is true and other statements, different set of statements, if that particular criteria or condition is false. And herein, is where the, the sequencing comes into place. So we have something known as a selection construct that deals with the logical sequencing known as an if. And if we have a look below, there are some syntax that you want to be aware of. We have what I call the single if. And this one tells us what to do when the condition is true but it does not tell us what to do when the condition is false. We also have what I call the double if. And in this one, it tells us what to do when the condition is true, but it also tells us what to do when the condition is false. So notice here that there is something known as an else block that was not present in the single if. So in the else block is where we are going to put the statements to be executed if the condition is false. And there might be cases where we want to be able to test multiple conditions. And in that case, we want to make use of the if else if block. And the else if allows us to specify many different conditions. So notice here, the if has condition one, else if has condition two. And if we wanted a condition three, we could have another else if. If we wanted a condition four, we could have another else if. And finally, we terminate everything, and this is usually what is done. We terminate everything with an else. Now, we only reach in the else if we are not able to enter any of the blocks that precede it, meaning everything above would have been false. And because everything above has been false, then we would default to the else block. So there are three primary statements that we are looking at the single if, the double if, and the multiple if. And that's my way of categorizing these, these operations. 
Also, just to note, so that it's absolutely clear, in terms of sequential sequencing, the order in which we place the commands will determine when they are executed. In other words, the command that we type first is the command that is going to be executed first. The command we type second is going to be the command that we are going to execute second. And sequential is what operates by default within the programming languages that we are looking at. So if it is that we want to move out of that default flow, then it means that we now need to be using something like a selection statement or a repetition statement. And in this session, we just want to focus on the selection statements. Just by way of diagram to give you a visual view of what is happening. In this one, this is the single if. And what we are saying here is that there is a condition. And if the condition is true, then there are some statements that we want to do as denoted by this if code. And it can be one or more statements. And then we now would reach the after the if statement block. So there are some statements that we might have before the condition. We hit the condition, test if, if it's true. If it's true, we do the things in this if code block. But if it's not true, then notice there's nothing to do. We simply move straight down until we reach the after the if statement block. So that's the single if. In the double if, note that there is something to do if the condition is true, but there's also something to do if the condition is false, as denoted by the brown or orange else block. And after that, in either case, we would now reach the after the if statement block. And with the if else if, we have our expression that we're testing to see if it's true. If it's true, we do those statements. If it is false, then we go and we check the second statement, the second condition. If that is true, then we do the statements associated with that condition. However, if it was false, then we go to another else if condition block. And remember, I had indicated that we can have as many else if as we want. The only time we reach the else statement as indicated before is if all the statements above were actually false. And then, irrespective of which block we would have entered, at the end, we would reach the rest of the code, which would be equivalent to the after the if statement block. So that's the visuals in terms of how the various selection constructs operate. And the next thing that we're going to do is to have a demonstration in terms of these commands so that we can see how they operate in terms of the actual programming language that we are using, which in this case is C++ for the demonstrations.